Hello and welcome to episode 5 of My Doll's House Diary. I can't tell you how excited I am to be getting back to work on this. If you saw my first vlog, my goals for 2019, you'll know that one of them is to complete My Doll's House this year. Now, as it's got 12 rooms, that means a room a month, we're already into the middle of January and I haven't done anything on it yet. So I might be being a little bit too ambitious with that goal, but I'm really going to try um, to get as much done this year as I can. If it carries over for the first few months of next year, that's okay, but I'm gonna try my best to get it done this year. Now, when I left you at the end of episode four, um, I was working on the living room. Now, if you saw the episode prior to that, you'll know that I was having trouble finding a fabric I liked to match the gold wallpaper. Well, I still couldn't find anything despite searching quite a few um, online suppliers. Um, so I sort of changed my mind and decided to go for a pale grey panelling and wallpaper with sort of grey and lavender fabric to match so that I could keep the black furniture that I'd already made. But after sort of, um, you know, laying it all out, I, I painted the panel in grey, I made a start on it. I then sort of laid the wallpaper just over the top to see how it looked, sort of put the fabric in um, over an, another piece of furniture, and I really didn't like how it looked. So I've decided to leave that room for now, and I'm going to move on to the kitchen. Now, I know exactly what I want in the kitchen. I want it to be a sort of, modern style farmhouse kitchen, lots of sort of red check. Um, I want to put a window in at the back where the, so that the sink can sit below it. Um, so a lot, lot of work to do in there. And another decision I made for the whole house was to completely renovate it. Now you may remember in one of my earlier um, Doll's House Diary episodes, as I said to you, I didn't really plan the decor before I started decorating the Doll's House. I just sort of went online, found some wallpaper that I liked, and just started the decorating. I hadn't planned around the paper, um, how I was going to furnish the rooms or anything, so I, I was just so excited to get started, so keen to get on with it, I rushed it really. And thinking about it now, it's not the wallpaper I would choose if I was starting it today. So I've made a decision to completely renovate the doll's house. Um, so I'll be pulling everything out and I actually managed to get started over the um, Christmas holiday and I've done a little bit in the kitchen. Now I didn't film any of it, but I did take a lot of photos. So let's have a look through those and I'll show you sort of at what stage I'm at now. So there's the kitchen as it was, that's as far as I'd got with it. And I'm not really sure why I decided upon the blue units. I think I just painted them that colour to match the Arga. So I just basically emptied everything out of the kitchen. There, everything's gone. Removed the curtains as well. And then began to remove the wall tiles. Now they're really nice little um, ceramic tiles um, that I bought at, um, I think, the first miniature that I did. So I'd glued those into place so they were quite difficult to remove. I had to use a flathead screwdriver and I, I managed to salvage a few so I'll probably use those um, in another part of the house, probably the bathroom. That was the old kitchen door. I didn't like the paint finish on there. I started it in a gloss paint um, and then gone over it and over it and, and the paint looked a bit sort of gloopy. So I just um, completely removed the door, and I'll probably do that um, for the, the whole house, as I've got those dark varnish doors in there, which I no longer like. So when I come to replace the doors, um, I'll put a sort of bar in at the top of the door opening, and then fit another pin hinge door. And I finally gave it a, a, a sweep with a, a soft bristled brush. I made a start on removing the chimney breast and I began by just scoring along the paper um, again with a flathead screwdriver. That was very difficult to remove again, I glued all that into place. It finally did come free and there you can see the um, backing panel as well which I'd papered and put in there to go behind the arga. Finally free and then I took that into the workshop and just stripped off as much of the um, lining paper that I could. That just left the bit of cove in there, so I could have salvaged that if I'd have decided to leave 
um, the wallpaper and, and ceiling paper in place. But like I said, I've decided on a total renovation, so that all had to come down. So again, started scoring along the um, ceiling paper there with my craft knife. And once I'd done that, it did actually all come out quite quite easily on the back as well. And then I just started um, pulling off the paper. Again, some of it's left, but I'll line the walls before I paint them again. And then I started off by doing a basic plan of the kitchen. So all I know at the moment is that I want a door and window on that back wall, a sink unit under the window, and units along that right-hand wall. The chimney breast will go back in the same, and I'll have the arga there. But I haven't really decided on what other units I want yet. But the idea of this was just to give me the sizing um, for where I needed to cut the window. So I then did a, a plan of the back wall as you would look at it. I then made a template of the back wall just um, by sticking together some pieces of A4 paper. And there's how I want the window, so the shaded area there to be removed. I cut that out, put it back into the kitchen and um, sort of copied the, the opening onto the back wall there. Okay, so the only thing um, I'm keeping in the kitchen is the flooring. And this is made from real stone um, slates or tiles um, and I laid them myself. I started by making a template of the kitchen floor from thin card um, and when you're doing that always bear in mind things like these um, door surrounds here that stick out into the room and also always leave yourself about a millimeter all the way around otherwise you'll find it's quite tight to get back in once you've um, laid the tile or the um, wooden flooring strips whatever you're going to use in there. I then um, cut the slates to size or the tiles to size and really then just laid them onto the template um, a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. Once that was done I grouted um, using a grey grout. I then applied a layer of PVA mixed with equal parts of water over the top of the entire area which seals it and then I was able to apply um, a coat of uh, matte varnish just really to sort of seal the whole area so really pleased with those so that's the only thing in here that I'm going to be keeping I'm also going to be keeping um, the Arga which I originally sprayed in this um, blue and it's actually a car paint colour it's a Ford blue um, but I'm going to do this in black so that will just require um, some masking off all the doors um, actually open so they'll all be removed and the, this sort of back bit actually comes out so I'll take the whole thing apart um, and I'll be spray painting that down in my husband's workshop but um, I'll take you down there with me when I do that so I'll show you sort of the whole process I'm just keeping that in the in the living room for now for safekeeping just pop that back in there you can see actually in the living room where I started painting the um, panel and in that pale grey colour I was talking about. Um, looks awful with the gold I know but I was going to use that grey paper but I'm not happy with it so we'll come back to that at a, la a later stage when I've really decided what I want to do with it. But back to the kitchen and this is the um, chimney breast that I removed. So I originally made that um, just using some MDF board really from a really old shelf unit that we had. So cut that to size and then cut that, um, glued the two pieces together and then cut this central area out. And I think because it's MDF, um, which is quite a porous wood, as it's been in there, it's, it's actually sort of swollen a bit. So that now doesn't go back in, which is really strange. So no wonder it was so difficult to get that out um, because it's probably a couple of millimetres now too large to go back in so that's that's okay because I can just sand along the top and along the sort of legs here um, to make that fit back in because I, I want to reuse that um, I like the sort of size of that um, the opener is just right for this Arga and I like the depth as well so we'll be keeping that and again I'm just keeping that in there for now 
for safekeeping. So my next job, and I'm a little bit nervous about doing this if I'm honest with you, is to um, cut out the window at the back of the kitchen. And I've got um, an electric drill and um, a jigsaw um, that I'll be using to, to cut that out. The drill will make the holes in the corners so that I've sort of got somewhere to start the jigsaw from. So that will be the next job. Right, now let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to start off um, with the drill. And I just want to drill into one of the corners. And this is just to um, get a starting point um, for the jigsaw blade. That's actually really tough to get through and as I was drilling there the house was moving so I'm just going to put my hand around the back so I can sort of hold on to it. It's quite awkward with this door here. Get it in again. We are getting there but that is so tough. Let's try again. So now I'll go and get the jigsaw and we'll start cutting. I'm just I'm going to have a look at the jigsaw blade. I may just have to make that hole um, a little bit bigger, but certainly not using this. OK, because I want to start cutting out from the back of the doll's house rather than from the inside, I've stuck the template using masking tape onto the back of the house here using the hole I made there as the sort of measurement for where the corner of the window begins. And I now just want to make sure that this is level along here. So I'm going to use the bottom um, of the doll's house here as my mark and just measure from the bottom of the window there. 109 millimetres. And that side is 109 millimetres. So my brick paper is straight as well. So that's what I used as a guide, so that's good. I want to make this hole a little bit larger. Um, so I'll have a look through my toolbox for a tool to do that. And then I can start cutting that out. OK, so I've drawn um, around the window cutout um, with pencil. So now I can remove the template. OK, so the hole I'd made with the drill bit wasn't actually big enough for the blade um, of the jigsaw. And this is unplugged at the moment. So I'm just going to try that in there again. Yeah, that now fits in the hole. So what I was using there to make it bigger was this miniature um, sort of pin file. And this is a round one. So I'm now going to plug this in. And I'm actually going to work um, across, first of all, so that I can then get onto a straight edge to go around the window. Now, I'm not a fan of power tools. Um, it's a bit nervous about doing this, and that probably comes from watching um, Kenny Everett as a child. Um, if you know Kenny Everett, you'll know what I mean. If not, try and check out his um, DIY sketches, and you'll see what I mean. Let's plug this in and have a go. I think I need to do more of an angle there so I can get, in fact I might even need to go into the corner, so let me do that again. Okay, so that's the sort of straight line that I want to be on. But now I think I'm going to have to turn around and come back this way. Okay, so there's the first the first cut made along there, fairly straight along that line. I'll file along there once I've done. I'm now going to cut um, straight down this piece here. Always put the um, blade into the hole and get it lined up and this plate flat against there 
before you press the button. So as I released um, the jigsaw then, it sort of shot off of its own accord and just made a little dent in the bottom of the window there. But I can cover anything like that up with the frame that I'm going to make. So now I'm going to go back along there. done. Let me get this thing unplugged. Okay, so got a bit of a cut going up there. And this isn't straight, um, sort of angles slightly downwards there. But I can clean all that up with by filing and sanding. Um, and then I can cover any sort of um, uh, bits that aren't straight with the frame. Okay. I really had planned on including quite a bit more in this episode, um, but the natural light is starting to fade um, and things took a lot longer than I wanted and I had to stop as well to recharge the camera battery. So time's gotten away with me a little bit, but I'm so, so pleased to have got that um, window cut out. I've sort of been dreading that a little bit and it went not too badly. Um, I need to do a bit of um, sanding and filing around the opening, um, but once I build the frame that will cover up any sort of little defect um, in the cutting out. Really didn't enjoy using that jigsaw, <laughs> um, but it's done now so that's good and the jigsaw can go back down to the uh, my husband's workshop never to be seen again. So yeah, that will be it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Next time um, I'll start sort of papering the walls with lining paper um, and then we can start the decorating, get that chimney breast back in. Um, also want to add some beams to the ceiling so we'll be doing that as well. But again, I'm probably planning too much for the next episode so we'll just do it in little um, bite-sized chunks. Okay, so thank you for watching. See you again soon. Bye.